The broadcast of the regular meeting of the Transportation and Public Works Committee will now begin. Good afternoon. Um, this is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Transportation and Public Works Committee for February 17th, uh, 2021. I'm Councilmember Kevin Reich. I chair the committee and I'm joined by my colleagues. As we begin, I'll note for the record that this is a meeting. Uh, this meeting has remote participation by members of the council and staff as authorized under Minnesota statute section 13D.021 due to the declared public health emergency. The city will be recording and posting this meeting on the city's website and YouTube channel as a means for increasing public access and transparency. Transportation Public Works Committee meetings are public and subject to the Minnesota open meeting law. At this time, I'll have the clerk call the roll to confirm a quorum for today's agenda. Council Member Gordon. I'm here. Fletcher. Here. Johnson. Here. Palmasano. Present. Bender. Here. Chair Reich. Here. There are six right, members the present. Reflect. We have a quorum. Uh, in recognition of February as Black History Month, Fire Chief Brian Tyner has challenged council members to open each public meeting with a historical fact tied to Black History Month. In that spirit, on this day in Black History, February 17, 1963, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, famed basketball player and former minor league baseball player, was born in New York City. Jordan would rise to national prominence quickly as an incredibly talented athlete. His leaping ability earned him the nickname Air Jordan. He also gained a reputation as being one of the best defensive players in the history of basketball. During his long career, Jordan became one of the most effective marketed athletes in, in his generation, and he was instrumental in popularizing the NBA around the world in the 80s and 90s. In 1991, Jordan won his first NBA championship with the Chicago Bulls and followed that achievement with titles in 92, 93, securing the three-peat. Though Jordan abruptly left the NBA in 1993 to pursue a career in baseball, he rejoined the Bulls in 95 and led them to three additional championships. Hello all, it looks like our chair, Council Member Reich's um, internet connection has frozen. Uh, I am the vice chair of the committee and would be happy to proceed. Um, I don't have the um, information in front of me that Council Member Reich was sharing, um, but we have um, may have a chance to add that back in at the end of the meeting so we can hear the end of the information. Um, so with that, I think we will proceed to our consent agenda. Just give me one moment to pull that up. And then we do also have two public hearings on the agenda for today's meeting. Taking up the consent agenda with item number three, that will be approving a list of routes and dates for the 2021 Minneapolis Open Streets. Item four, is approving appointments to the Metro Blue Line Extension Light Rail Project Transit Transit Project Community Advisory Committee. Item five is an agreement with Excel Energy for the Twin Cities Electric Vehicle Mobility Network. Item six is an agreement with the Minnesota Department of Transportation for landscaping improvements at the intersection of Penn Avenue South and Mount View Avenue. Item seven is the agreement with the Metropolitan Council for Transit Signal Priority for Buses. Eight is a contract with Bolton and Mank for engineering and service design services for the bridge nine improvements project. 
Item nine is a contract amendment with BNL Supply Inc. for LED street light fixture equipment. Item 10 is a contract amendment with Minger Construction Companies for Hennepin Avenue sanitary sewer replacement for project phase two. 11 is a contract amendment with Safety Signs LLC for rental of work zone traffic control devices. Item 12 is passage of a resolution designating the location and improvements proposed to be made in the 42nd Street East Phase 1 of the Luella Anderson Street Reconstruction Project and uh, adopting a report receiving the cost estimate for that project. Item 13 is uh, passage of a resolution establishing the 50th and France Special Service District Advisory Board. Item 14 is 54th and Lindale Special Service District Board passage of a resolution establishing board. Item 15 is passage of a resolution establishing the West Broadway Improvement Special Service District Advisory Board. Item 16 is a bid accepting the low bid of Thomas and Sons Construction and the amount of $1,317,301.54 for signals and pedestrian improvements throughout the city. Item 17 is accepting the low bid of SM Henches and Sons and the amount of $3,479,129.35 for the Johnson Street Northeast Street Reconstruction Project. And item 18 is accepting the low bid of Tiller Corporation in the amount of $4,443,490 for materials, labor, equipment, and incidentals necessary for providing the two mixtures for the public works departments and authorizing that contract. Are there any items that anyone would like to pull from the consent agenda? I see a note from the clerk that item 15 is approving a revised request for council action, and that is the item related to the West Broadway Improvement Special Service District Advisory Board. I will go ahead and move the consent agenda. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Bender. Aye. Chair Wright. There are five ayes. Those items pass and they'll be forwarded to the city council meeting a week from Friday. That returns us back to the public hearings. The first public hearing is related to a project on 35th Street East, um, Phillips South and Powderhorn, and it will begin with a staff presentation before opening the public hearing. Good afternoon, uh, Council President Bender and committee members. Mike Kennedy, our Director of Transportation and Maintenance and Repair will present the item. Thank you, Director Jelly, uh, members of the committee and Chair Reich. Um, we are here as stated to um, have the public hearing for the Phillips South Powder Horn and 35 um, Street East Street Resurfacing Project. <clears throat> On December 18th, 2020, the City Council designated the location streets and improvements <clears throat> proposed to be made in the 2021 Street Resurfacing Program, of which this project is part of. Phillips South is um, the area shown on the map um, above Lake Street with the, the streets filled in. The, um, <clears throat> this was built, this neighborhood was built in 1974 and has a current pavement condition index of 57. The Powder Hard uh, project is south of Lake Street as shown on your map. <clears throat> it has it surrounds uh, Powder Hard Park. Uh, has a, it was built, those streets were built in 1976 and have a PCI of 57. And lastly, 35th Street East is from Chicago Avenue to Cedar Avenue. This is a uh, municipal state aid street, which was reconstructed in 1963 and has a PCI of, has, has a range of PCI from 66 to 72. 
The proposed street uh, resurfacing special assessments were determined by applying the 2021 uniform assessment rates to the land area of benefit parcels located within the street influence zone along the improved streets. These assessments are not calculated based on project cost alone. The city uses a formula that combines the influence area with an annually established uniform assessment rate. This formula is carefully considered and applied by city staff and is intended to account for and reflect each project's value to benefited properties. The 2021 resurfacing rates are 66 cents per square foot for non-residential properties and 22 cents per square foot for residential properties. The proposed total assessment amount for the Phillips South Powderhorn and 35th Street e East uh, Street resurfacing project is $1,697,780.28. We did um, hold a neighborhood meeting, uh, a virtual neighborhood meeting on Wednesday, February 10th. Um, there were over a thousand invitations sent out uh, and seven attendees actually attended and logged into the meeting. Some of the issues that were brought forward were um, this is a tough time to be doing assessments, financial, assess financial assessments during this difficult financial year. Um, <clears throat> there, there's questions about benefits to properties, construction fatigue from all the construction occurring in the neighborhood, including a lot from Center Point Energy that we'll talk about in a minute. The homeless encampment at Powderhorn Park in the summer of 2020 and concerns of the pending George Floyd trial and uh, which could produce more social unrest. So those were many of the things that were discussed that people were concerned with at the meeting. Um, <clears throat> we are aware of at least, I'm aware of at least nine letters of objection uh, regarding this particular project uh, at, around Powderhorn. Two of the people who wrote letters of objection may be here to testify. A common concern amongst the other things I'd already mentioned um, included the Center Point Energy work. Um, there was a Center Point Energy Beltline project, uh, a large main repair and replacement project that went down 15th uh, to the east of Potterhorn Park, jogged over at 35th and then went south on 14th. That was uh, a large project and disruptive. Um, <clears throat> some of the street was repaired, but not all of it. And then there was also a lot of uh, activity from Center Point's inside meter movement or ISM program where they would go in and replace the meters inside homes. Quite often they would have to punch holes in the streets and, and uh, uh, have those restored. Uh, it actually isn't happenstance that we are coming in behind them. We always try to coordinate with the utility companies out there because we want them to come before we put down new asphalt, not after. And so um, this was, was fairly coordinated. Um, there's a lot of concern that um, our project is going to come through and rip up the streets again. And that's not quite true. This is a resurfacing project. So all we're going to be doing is uh, milling off a top layer of the asphalt and uh, putting down a new uh, new mat, a new um, asphalt layer to restore the, the street condition and extend the life cycle of that street. We're not that um, intensive uh, work. People will see some minimal um, curb replacement work. They will see um, a, a couple of days of milling in the neighborhood, and then after that, a couple of days of paving. So it is not um, that um, intensive a project or that dis as disruptive as, say, new construction would be or some of this other work like the Beltline project. <clears throat> so um, with that, um, our recommendation today is passage of a resolution ordering the work to proceed and adopting special assessments in the amount of $1,697,780 uh, for the Phillips and Powderhorn and um, 35th Street project and passage of resolution requested the board an estimate of board of estimate and taxation to authorize the city's issuance <clears throat> on the sale of assessment bonds in the amount I had enumerated. That's my presentation today. We have, uh, I can stand for questions and we have staff who could answer uh, questions as well. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Are there any questions for staff before we open the public hearing? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. We have two members of the public who have signed up to speak today. You'll need to push star six to unmute your lines. And then there's a little delay as the phone system unmutes. The first person signed in today is Patrick Luby. Welcome. Hi there, can everybody hear me? 
Yes, welcome. Hi there, so I had uploaded a letter. I'm not sure how many were able to read it. Um, I might just kind of go ahead and reiterate a lot of the points that I had made in the letter, some of which um, were just mentioned in the presentation. Um, the thing that I'm most concerned about is that even as minor as the work may be, with several years of center point coming in and tearing up the neighborhood and having all this noise and construction and everything. And then with uh, going into our second pandemic summer in a row, where in this neighborhood, the park is basically the only outdoors opportunity that uh, most of the residents in the area can go and do on a regular basis, um, which is again, outdoors opportunities being the only opportunity to socialize or see anything new or do anything safe. Um, it will yet again be a noisy and chaotic environment. Last year, because of the city's uh, lack of action on its homeless crisis, this year because of yet more construction. Um, we also found out after I wrote this letter that uh, US internet is going to be putting in lines in this neighborhood this year as well, uh, which sounds, I'm not sure if the city is coordinating with them or not, but that just sounds like uh, even more coming in and tearing up streets. And I have a lot of concern about that too. Um, and I'm just wondering why the city wasn't able to consider any of these things in its uh, schedule if we couldn't you know push this back even just one year um, because of everything we've been through in the last several years not just uh, the pandemic and the, pro uh, the protests and the homeless crisis of 2020 but uh, the, the everything that center point has done in this neighborhood for the last several years and i'm just kind of i i think I speak for my neighbors when I say we could really use uh, a break. Thank you. Uh, I've noted the questions and we will be able to have staff address what they can at the end. We have one more speaker signed in ahead of time who also sent written communication to the city. Be short, welcome. You'll need to push star six to unmute. And I believe that we also have Councilmember Reich joining us by phone after the technical difficulties. Um, welcome back, Chair Reich. Thank you. Is B short on the line? Yes. Yes. Please, please go ahead. Well, I, I agree with the previous speaker. Um, I we have been dealing with a lot, and. Just like the previous speaker, um, we what is going to happen? Are we going to get reassessed when the internet company comes back and re uh, tear up these streets? Because according to my record, um, we were not supposed to pay for the repairs in the first place. The letter that I attached to my letter, uh, Centerpoint Industries stated they they were going to restore the streets um, after their project. And Singapore Energy has contacted me previously this year and stated that um, they're coming back out to our street. So they spent about three and a half months on our street in 2020, and they're planning on spending another three to four months on our streets, putting holes in it. And according to the letter that they sent me, they stated that they're going to restore it. So what happens, why are we restoring something that Center for Energy promised the homeowners that they were going to restore? Um, question um, that didn't get handled in the first meeting. Um, my second question is, why are we not coordinating it, this information with the internet company since they have to do the same damage to our, our public streets as well? Um, that's my concern, and I, I'm with the first caller. Why can't we push this back one year? Um, just to get some rest, regardless of anything, um, we're, this is our mental health regarding, um, we are trapped in our homes right now due to the pandemic, and just in a couple of weeks, we're going to have to deal with people riding in our streets, which that will block us off, and on top of that, we're we're going to be because of center point we're going to be asked to move our our vehicles not in front of our homes not parked in front of our homes 
that's unsafe right now because of all the carjacking that is currently happening on a daily basis in Minneapolis. So you want us to park our cars when we're at home, you want us to park our cars a couple blocks over so you can tear up our streets and then we walk out to go to our car and our car may or may not be there. That's just a stress on a, a loan. Our mental health right now really needs to be considered um, during this time. And, and that's what I'm asking for. Just give us time to be collective and give us some time to enjoy the spring. We didn't even have a chance to enjoy spring, summer, fall last year at all due to all the things that happened in 2020. So we just want 2021 to at least get some kind of peace, at least get some kind of joy, at least get, we can walk around the park. Um, and that's what I have to say. I mean, I, I wanna make sure that I at least get a rest or a mental health break from the city. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Those Thank are the you. two callers that we had signed in ahead of time. I don't think we have anyone else on the line, but I'll just pause and make sure there's no one else who would like to speak on this item. Seeing none, I will go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, I know staff spoke to some of the project timing and other issues at the beginning, but I wondered if Mr. Kennedy, you or staff could, or, or Dr. Jelly, address some of the questions that were raised specifically about timing with other work. Um, the possibility of project delay. And I'll just note that the council member for this area is not on the committee. Um, you know, no matter what happens at today's committee, this item will be forwarded to the council meeting for full, for the final decision that would happen. So that will happen a week from Friday in the next, next week, next Friday. Um, and that may give some time to check in with that council office as well. Uh, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, uh, Chair um, and members of the committee. <clears throat> this project is part of our five-year capital improvement program. It's been in the works for several years. Um, to stop and delay it would be fairly difficult because then it would be on top of other projects that we have uh, planned for the next year. It's just part of our normal cadence of work. Um, <clears throat> we, The city does want to continue to provide services to the city. Despite um, the COVID pandemic, I, I know last year, if you remember, the governor even said construction needs to move on in the state because it's incredibly important to um, economic vitality of the, of the state and, and it is to the city. And we do need to continue to provide these valued services, which includes street repaving, street maintenance to um, avoid more costly work in the future. Um, <clears throat> the the um, center point energy costs for restoring, restoring streets are completely borne by them. Um, this project is independent of their work. We did time it so that we come in after them, but any street re restoration for their utility cuts um, is paid for by them. This street resurfacing, if even if um, Centerpoint wasn't there, this would be going forward and the assessments and net debt bond um, uh, payment methods are, are independent of that work. And so the assessments for the um, resurfacing that the neighbors are going to get are for this project only, not for um, the research, for the center point work. Um, I'm not sure what US Internet is doing. Typically, they're not that disruptive in, in the streets. We can find out more about that. If there's any CPE work, center point energy work yet to be done prior to our work, um, we will make sure that that happens before we um, do our work and so that uh, they wouldn't be cutting into our pavements, into our new pavement. Mr. Kenny, could you just describe, um, you know, what's the typical resurfacing schedule? You know, how long does it take from start to finish on a given street for that resurfacing to take place? Well, sure, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, yes, on a particular street, what a particular neighborhood neighbor might see um, is they might see a little bit of limited, for our project, they might see a little bit of limited curb replacement. Um, that would take a few days. Then uh, later on, they will see a day of, uh, they'll see streets posted for a day and a day of milling, where we mill off the pavement surface. And then a little bit following that, they will see a day of asphalt paving. 
So there will be that would what one person would see on their street. It'll be happening kind of around the neighborhood, sort of a, a, at a week at a time. Um, but that's what we mean by this isn't that terribly disruptive. We're only talking about a week's worth of time out of the whole summer. Thank you. Are there any other questions from council members on this item? I don't hear any. I, I will go ahead and move the item for discussion. Is there any discussion on project approval for this resurfacing project? I don't hear any. I, I do, um, you know, I just want to offer as I think Mr. Kennedy did any kind of follow up that staff can provide on the specifics around some of the technical questions that were raised both to the hearing and in some of the written questions, some of which I think are city projects and other were um, external groups, but the city could help with facilitation of that communication and some of those technical details. I also, I mean, I, I do want to just really acknowledge what we heard from the speakers um, about just all that this neighborhood has been through in the last year and how challenging and difficult it has been um, for members across the city, but this neighborhood in particular had uh, just an extraordinarily different, difficult and chaotic spring, summer and fall. And I, just, I really just take that to heart. Um, I see council member Gordon in queue as well to speak. Go ahead, council member Gordon. Thank you much. I guess I just wanted to express some of the same sentiments. Um, I uh, appreciate the concerns that were raised. Um, I also um, can say that I've seen resurfacing projects and they they are over soon and in the end the streets are so much better. People do really appreciate that. The one thing I regret is that we haven't heard from the council members. So even as we move this forward today, I'll commit to making sure to reach out and see if there we can get any more information in terms of community feedback and input. And I'd encourage people who are concerned because as I'm going to vote to move it forward, it isn't necessarily um, something I would object to delaying next year if the recommendation came in to do that too. But I really know that this resurfacing helps preserve our streets and that uh, I recognize the staff goes at great lengths to schedule these, but we need to be also responsive to the community. So I'll keep an open mind as it goes forward to the council. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Council member Gordon. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Vice Chair Bender. Aye. Chair Reich. Aye. There are six ayes. That item carries and it will be forwarded to the City Council for final approval a week from Friday. I'll just note that I'm going to continue um, chairing the meeting on behalf of Chair Reich. It's pretty challenging to try to chair a meeting from phone, so I'm happy to step in and glad you were able to get back with us, Council Member. Uh, that brings us to our second item on the public hearing agenda. Um, this is uh, related to the Special Service District Advi Advisory Board Composition Ordinance, and we'll begin with a staff um, update before we open the public hearing on this item. Thank you, Council President Bender. Andrew Carlson, our Project Manager for Special Service Districts, will introduce the item. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair and Committee members. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank Wonderful. you for checking. Uh, well, it's great to be here today. Um, uh, my name is Andrew Carlson and I'm the project manager for special service districts. Uh, the proposed ordinance amendments will change the advisory board compositions in certain special service districts and the name of the uh, 48th Street East and Chicago Avenue South District. Reducing the board composition of the identified special service districts uh, will better align with historical participation levels. SSD advisory boards are comprised of commercial property owners or their representatives, which include property managers and commercial tenants 
who are located within the district and are incurring the district service charges. Advisory board members are appointed by the City Council. Staff has been working with the SSD advisory boards to determine the appropriate composition of board seats for their respective districts to better reflect realistic participation levels, and most importantly, to ensure that the advisory board can meet quorum requirements for every meeting. While some special service districts have been successful in recruiting advisory board members to serve on their respective boards, other districts have found it challenging to remain to maintain a full slate of members and as a result meet quorum requirements. After engaging with each advisory board, staff recommends that the advisory boards for the identified districts to reduce uh, their number of seats to reflect uh, realistic participation levels. All advisory board uh, meetings are publicly noticed and are uh, open to the public, and that has always been the case. Uh, the other part of the ordinance amendments has to do with one of our districts. Um, it's it's a mouthful. Uh, the 48th Street East and Chicago Avenue South Special Service District uh, simply wants to change its name to a more succinct 48th in Chicago Special Service District. So this will better align uh, with its promotion and branding for the district. So in closing, the proposed changes uh, may be approved to the respective city ordinances without the need to amend enabling state statutes or laws. Therefore, it is recommended that these uh, subject ordinance amendments be approved. Uh, that concludes my comments and I stand for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Are there any questions on the staff report? I don't see any. I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. We do have one speaker registered for today's hearing. Um, it looks like they may not be online, but I will open the public hearing and check to see. We have Brenda Hill signed up. And you'll need to push star six to unmute your line if you'd like to speak on this item. It looks like we do not have um, that speaker on the call. Would anyone else like to speak on this item? We do not have anyone else, so I will go ahead and close the public hearing. Is there any discussion on this item or a motion on this item? I can go ahead and, and move the item for discussion. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Balmasano. Aye. Bender. Aye. Chair Rake. Aye. There are six ayes. That case and that is adopted will be forwarded to the City Council meeting a week from Friday. With that, uh, we have concluded all of the business for our agenda today. So without objection, we will adjourn. Thank you so much.